on his four quarterback draws. Eric Olson has three carries for seven and left Sevick on a couple of end arounds, two carries for six yards. Throwing the football this afternoon, Eric Olson just under 50%, seven of 16 passing, 115 yards and three touchdowns. Brian Herb, one for one on the afternoon, a 23-yard completion to Eric Olson. Receiving-wise, we mentioned Olson. He has the 23-yard reception. Herb has a reception for 22 and a touchdown. Left Sevick with two catches. Total 21 yards and a touchdown. And Brian Rice has 58 yards on two catches. The touchdown catch of four. Rice went for 17, and he had a 41-yarder in the first quarter. Defensively, Case is led by Adam Watson, nine tackles. Ryan Ferguson also with nine. Kevin Nossum and Wade Self, the two linebackers with six apiece. For Worcester, individually on the ground, John Battaglia, 33 carry or 33 yards on nine carries. He leads the way. He also has a touchdown. Richard Barnes, six carries officially, and he has lost 11, 11 yards on the afternoon. Through the air, Barnes is 13 of 21 for 130 yards. He's been sacked one time. He does have one touchdown pass. Jordan McIntyre, the leading receiver for Worcester. Four catches, but only netted 15 yards. Justin Rice leads the way in receiving yards. 34 yards receiving for Rice on two catches. And defensively, Keith Lemke leads the way. Five tackles. Quinn Hood also has five for the Worcester Fighting Scots. That's where we stand at halftime. 24-14 case on top of the Worcester Fighting Scots. We'll now turn it back over to the voice of Case Western Reserve University football, Dave Wilson. So Wor Worcester quarterback uh, Richard Barnes, 11 yards gained, 11 yards lost for a net of zero. It's exactly like my uh, monthly income and expenses and the balance of my checking account. <laughs> non-profit, aren't you, Dave? Just, yeah, non-profit. Always end up at zero. Even Steven. All right, uh, the word from down below, we talked with Dane McKee, the sports information director here on site at Case Western Reserve. The word on Colin Dessens was that the uh, initial uh, diagnosis on the field was a stinger and that he was taken off uh, for precautionary measures. Uh, obviously, they want to uh, be very cautious with those types of injuries. Uh, they said he did lose feeling momentarily, but... Uh, that uh, they felt he would be fine, that it was a stinger and not uh, anything more serious. But uh, they did want to take uh, every possible precaution, and we certainly hope that that is the case. That is not uh, confirmed, but that was uh, the feeling on the field uh, as they uh, administered first aid to Colin. And obviously they wanted to uh, take uh, uh, the greatest uh, amount of uh, steps that they could to ensure that uh, he would be uh, uh, treated properly. And so they took him off on the stretcher, uh, strapped him to the body board and all of those things uh, just in case it was more serious. But we hope that that is the case, but that is the word from the field. Worcester will have the ball to start play here in the second half, and we are underway in the third quarter as Juan Kuhn Park Kicks off to start play. Worcester moving left to right to start the third quarter. The return comes out across the 35-yard line. And the Scots will start out at about the 37 on the kick return by Sean Hackle. 24-14, to 14, a 10-point lead for Case Western Reserve. A late touchdown by Worcester has brought them to within 10. Richard Barnes is back out. McIntyre in motion. He'll get the handoff on the sweep to the near side. Dieter wipes him out as he crosses the 40, and he will get to about the 43-yard line. Pick up a five on the play, second down and five. Brandon Bryant is back in the ball game for Case at right defensive end. Had an uh, injury to his left knee earlier in the half. Here's an incomplete pass over the middle. It was intended for Adam Kopik, and it will be third and five for Worcester. Underway here in the second half on a beautiful day here at Case Field. It is bright and sunny, but the temperature in the 50s 
24-14 case. Juan Kuhn Park, a 26-yard field goal. And then three touchdown passes from Eric Olson. Case showing blitz, back to throw Barnes, and the pass knocked down, incomplete. Ryan Ferguson jumping the route, knocking the ball away from Jake Zolden of Worcester, and that forces fourth and five from the 43-yard line of the Scots, and Case will get it back as the Scots will come out to punt. Well, Worcester went with a five-wide receiver set. Case went nose-to-nose -nose with those five and brought the two middle linebackers on a blitz. There were too many players for Worcester to block, and Barnes had to get rid of the ball early. Calabrese stationed at his own 20. Case thinking about coming after it. Self is blocked, and the punt goes to the far side of the field and out of bounds. Did get it inside the 30. So it'll be a 29-yard punt with no return. Case will come out and take over at the 28-yard line. Spartans up by 10, 24 to 14, trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Longest losing streak. I believe it was since 2005, Dave. Certainly, that has uh, been something very the, unusual. Well, 2006, uh, Ed, at one point they lost four in a row. That was a team that finished up at five and five. They had lost at Grove City, I believe, to go to four and five and then won the following week. Billy Beecher on the run from the quarterback position, dives out across the 35 and is close to first down yardage. Well, Worcester for years, Dave, had been a thorn in Case's side. That game was always played early in the year between Case and Worcester, either the third or fourth week of the year. And Case would get out of the gate very well and they would run into the buzzsaw that was the Worcester Scots, and it seemed to always spiral the season downhill, including the 05 season where they lost to Worcester and went on to lose six more in a row and finished at 3-7. and seven. Hanslick on the run. The nice cutback gets across the 40. Extra yardage, yardage out to the 45, and a first down run for Ricky Hanslick, playing on a sore ankle that he twisted in practice on Thursday. But uh, ran very well that time. Good cutback as he got to the numbers on the near side. It's first and 10 for Case from their own 46-yard line. During that 2006 season, Worcester picked up a win 21-7 after the Spartans had started out at 3-0. Olsen on the run, fires the pass out to Lapsevic, makes the catch, plenty of yardage after the catch, still on his feet, out to the 30-yard line, down close to the 25. And Dan Calabrese, pardon me, Sean Lapsevic with great yardage after the catch, has the first down and more, all the way from the 46 across midfield and down to the 27-yard line. 27-yard pass play. And Case has it first and 10 from the Worcester 27-yard line. This is Hanslick again running on the left side. Gets tripped up but gets inside the 25. Twenty-four to fourteen. Spartans trying to Get those points back that they gave up at the tail end of the first half on that 30-yard touchdown pass. Herb all alone on the right side, Dave. Just inside the numbers. This is where they set him up before. One-on-one -on -one coverage over there, but Olsen looks back to the near side, hits Rice with a pass inside the 10, gets down to the 5, still fighting for extra yardage, and he gets down to the 3-yard line. 19-yard pickup for... Brian Rice as Olsen hits him with a little screen pass. Rice caught his first touchdown pass of the season in the first half. First and goal from the three-yard line for the Spartans. Ezra Kim lined up at a tailback position. Hockman at fullback. 
Olsen takes the snap. They'll hand it to Ezra Kim straight ahead, and he is in there. First college touchdown for Ezra Kim. Touchdown Spartans, and it's 30 to 14. Boy, just power football there. And what you saw was the, the future of Case football in terms of depth. Kim, the freshman behind Hockman, the sophomore. Or Hockman also a freshman. Right. Yep, two freshmen lining up in that I formation. And got the job done. Three yard touchdown run. Here's the kick by Juan Coon Park. And it is up and it is good. And the Spartans extend the lead now to 31 to 14 here in the third quarter. 11.33 to go in quarter number three, and the Spartans jump back up on top comfortably. Worcester will get the ball back. Going back to that uh, discussion about the 2006 season, that was the last time the Case had a three-game losing streak, and in fact, they had a four-game streak starting at Worcester, then a 16-7 loss to Ursinus, then Carnegie Mellon, 20 to 10 here at home, and then at Wash U, 13 to 6. That 13 to 6 game, that was was a game in which Dan Whalen was responsible for five turnovers in that game, and uh, at Francis Field, there it's a one-sided affair, much like Case is, and uh, we looked into the Case bench on the far, far side of the field there, and that was the day that. Uh, Greg Debelak tried to imitate the 1904 Olympics and fired his headset about as far as a discus as he was frustrated with the offensive play that afternoon. Brandon James on the return of the kickoff gets out across the 25 and down near the 30-yard line. In fact, right on the 30-yard line after his return. And the Scots will... Come out on offense, trailing at 31 to 14. Five turnovers for Whalen that day, huh? Yeah, he had a couple of picks. Don't wonder he amounted to anything. They fumbled the ball away, and <laughs> it was a silent plane ride home that night. Barnes, quick strike. Pass is caught by Zach Wiedrich, but uh, cut down quickly. Watson was there along with Dieter and Nassim. Pickup of about two. I just remember that Case was driving for a tying score in that game, and I don't remember if it was a fumble by, by Whalen or if it was an interception, but after the fifth turnover late in the fourth quarter as they were driving for the score, and head coach Craig Deblack just took his headset off and fired it back towards the... Uh, Straight up the middle, Bataglia. First down yardage, gets out close to midfield before Ferguson finally wrestles him down. But Taglia was uh, shaken up on a plate near the end of the first half, but he is back in and ran well there all the way out to the 49-yard line. Scott still operating in their own territory, but first and 10, 10.39 to go. But Taglia running it again, runs into Bryant, dives ahead and gets a couple. And it is second down and eight. But Case responded nicely at the end of that season. They, uh, it was a shootout at Grove City in week nine, I believe, and then came back in week 10 here at home, finished the season strong against Washington and Lee, I believe, or Washington and Jefferson was the school they played at the end of that 06 season, and it really gave them a momentum boost, knocking off a playoff school going into the offseason. Jordan McIntyre tries to cut it back after sprinting out to the far side, got to the hash mark, and then tried to turn it back upfield. He was hit and tackled. Ferguson and Watson there defensively for the Spartans. It's third down and five. Richard Barnes, the quarterback for the Fighting Scots. Barnes, a junior. Six feet tall, 200-pounder out of Painesville Harvey High School. Calls out the signal, shotgun formation. They come after him, fires the pass downfield. It's caught for a first down. Case Called was, in by Keith Lemke. Well, Case was 
in that man-to-man -man defense because of the blitz situation. Wooster did a nice job of picking it up, but you leave yourself exposed if that blitz gets picked up. 9-12 to go, third quarter, 31-14 case. Scott's marching left to right here in the third quarter. Pataglia gets the handoff. Here he goes, and he is tripped up from behind. Nicely done by Justin Williams, the defensive tackle for the Spartans, to trip up Pataglia. Boy, this guy can be a formidable weapon running the football. Eight forty-two to go. Third quarter. Case with a comfortable lead, but Worcester trying to take a bite out of that. They're in Case territory. Barnes hands it off to McIntyre. Sweep to the near side. Gets to the numbers near the sideline, and is upended by Kerry Dieter as he gets down to the 24-yard line. That's a pickup of six, and it's very close to a first down. They may feel they want to take a look at this one. It's that close. Nope, oh, first down. The referee says, leave the chains on the sidelines. Sounds like some of the crowd did not agree. First and 10, the football at the 24-yard line. We have 8-12 to go in the third quarter. Worcester trying to make this one a little more interesting. Three receivers all stacked on the left side. Battaglia in the backfield to the left of Barnes. They will hand it to Battaglia. Had a nice hole open up. Gets down close to the 21. A pickup of three. And it'll be second down and seven. Battaglia getting some help on that offensive line. Michael McCants, the right guard. Helped open up some space. Nick Flannery, the right tackle. Barnes calls out the signals. They'll give it to Battaglia again. This time got some help from the left side of the line. Dives down close to the 17. That's a pickup of four. Just that read option trap inside. Barnes has the, the choice either to keep it in Battaglia's gut or pull it out and roll to his left. In that case, he saw a Case hedging the corner and gave it to Battaglia going up the middle on the trap play. Third down and two. The football at the Case 17 for the Fighting Scots. Battaglia straight ahead, running behind the left guard, Paul Kelby, and is hit and knocked down as he gets close to the 15. I believe he's a little short of the first down. Yeah, Case did a nice job of closing that off. It'll be fourth down and about one for the Scots. Jake Zolden checking in to the left of Barnes. They will give it to Battaglia and he gets a full head of speed, steam and dives ahead for the first down. Well, steam or speed, I think they're interchangeable in that case. <laughs> and it's a first down for the Scots as they convert on fourth down again. The football is at the 13-yard line. New set of plays deep in case territory. Three receivers on the right, one on the left. Battaglia stays in at running back. Why not? Let's give it to Battaglia again. Gets inside the 10 before he is wrapped up and dropped by the Spartans. Mike Sarosky got in there on the tackle. Got all the way down to the nine. They can get a first down at the three. Second down and six from the nine yard line for the Fighting Scots. Bright and sunny right now here at Case. What a beautiful fall day. There's the snap to Barnes. Giving it to Battaglia. He is hit and knocked down by Wade Self. Might have gotten a couple there. Jordan Banky also with the assist. Clearing out from his safety position. Well, Self somehow stopped that speeding locomotive. Battaglia. It's, at some point, you hope this train starts running uphill instead of downhill, Dave. Battaglia, the Akron product out of Revere High School. 
Third down and four from the seven. They've already converted on fourth down on this drive. Barnes to throw it to the end zone. Caught by McIntyre, and he is going to be short of the end zone. They have not called it a touchdown. It looked like he was on top of the case defenders, Ed, never on the turf, and he kind of spun his way on into the end zone, and there's your touchdown. The officials talked it over, and I think the prevailing wisdom was that he was never on the ground. Yeah, the question was whether or not when he spun over the top of the case defender, did his elbow touch the ground before he extended the football into the end zone, and they said no, and six more on the board for Worcester. That makes it 31 to 20. On to kick it for the extra point is Tyler Gerwig. And the kick is up, and it is good. And Worcester pulls to within Edel, uh, 10 now at 31 to 21. We'll take a timeout here. More third quarter action is coming up after this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. I have this cool cash. What can I do with it? You can turn it into a hot meal at Rascal House. It's the best value in town. What do they have there? Buckets of wings, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and of course, great pizza. Are they open late? You bet. Open every night till 2.30 a.m. And you can even build your own pizza and order it online at rascalhousepizza.com. Cool. See you at the Spartans game? Yep. And see you after at Rascal House. Worcester to kick off after pulling back to within 10 points, 31 to 21. This Fighting Scots team will not go away, Adorti. Oh, every time Case tries to extend that lead back out, Worcester finds a way to bring the ship a little closer to shore. Jordan McIntyre's second touchdown catch of the season, a seven-yard strike from Barnes. Here is the kick from Gerwig, and it is a deep kick. Calabri slips and falls inside the five-yard line, and Case will have a long field ahead. It is marked at the four. How much you can do about that? Just either caught a cleat or had his cleats come out from underneath him and take the step and down you go. Now Calabri's dangerous returner caught that ball and then just slipped and fell that was the end of the play and it's first and ten from the four yard line Hanslick lines up in his own end zone behind Hockman the fullback Olsen will hand it to Ricky Hanslick and he runs out across the five gets maybe to the seven yard line cut down near the right hash marks four and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter Case leading it by 10, 31 to 21, trying to knock off the Fighting Scots who are certainly playing with a purpose today. They are one and three. Both squads uncharacteristically with some challenges here in the first part of the season. Hanslick again on the carry. He is wrapped up and tackled by Colin Woodward, the sophomore linebacker out of Greensburg, PA. Not much of a push there. The play just seemed to take a long time to develop. Offensive line really didn't get deep into the defensive front seven. And Hanslick was a little slow getting to the line of scrimmage. Third down and six. The football is at the eight yard line. Case in danger of having the field tipped here if they cannot engineer a first down and get the ball a little farther downfield. Lap Sevick, the catch and the run. There's your first down out across the 20, ran into his own man and gets tripped up at the 25-yard line. Well, that's he was running up the back of Andy Burkbile. That's absolutely key to move the chains like that. Eric Olson coming to the sideline, Dave. Beecher will check in. Now from the 8 all the way out to the 25-yard line. Pickup of 17 on the pass play to Sean Lapsevic. 
First and 10 from the 25. Football on the right hash. They'll give it to Beecher. He'll try and run it. Gets five, maybe seven as he dives ahead and is drugged down from behind by Brian Doherty. That's six rushes now on the afternoon for Beecher. This time it looks like Billy will stay in. Well, this will be the first time for two consecutive plays. 2.33 to go, third quarter. Second down and three after a seven-yard run. Beecher will run it again, and this time is tripped up and maybe lost one. Not much room for Beecher to operate there. Olsen will come back into the ball game. Back-to-back -back quarterback scrambles by Beecher. And that leaves it at third and three. Worcester will try and stiffen up defensively here. Big play for Case. Third and three from the Case 32-yard line. Olsen is under center. Hanslick is in the backfield. He is the lone setback. Rice on the left side. Brian Erb on the right. Spartans moving right to left. Back to throw. Olsen guns it for Brian Rice. It's incomplete. Quick slant pattern. Off the mark. Thrown behind Rice. And it's fourth down and three. Well, if not for that long pass play to Lapsevic, Worcester would be looking at phenomenal field position as it is. Brandon James will drop back for the Fighting Scots. He will be stationed right around the 30-yard line. Alex Ojeda will prepare to punt this one away. There's the snap back to Ojeda, and he gets the play away. It's a nice punt out to the 39-yard line. James makes the catch, returns it out to the 42-yard line. Nassim knocks him down and wipes out the play. Twenty nine yard kick and about a three yard return for Brandon James. And out come the Scots here. Final minute and a half of the third quarter. One twenty nine to go. Case up by ten and so now it becomes imperative to have a defensive stop or two. Barnes hit as he throws. It's up for grabs, and it is incomplete, but pass interference will be called against the Spartans as Brandon Flick will get flagged here as that pass was a little underthrown. I believe that was Weedrick, the intended target. And it will be a pass interference call against Case. Oh, well, it's a good call. Brandon Flick just trying to prevent the catch. Reached around and grabbed the offensive player's arms. Automatic first down. And the football will be marked at the 43-yard line of the Spartans. 15-yard penalty. Battaglia is in as the setback behind Richard Barnes. Four receivers set now. Jake Zolden lined up as a tight end position. Battaglia straight ahead, hits the pile, nowhere to go. Might have picked up one. Michael Harris comes up limping a little bit after the end of that play. Each team has three timeouts left. No one has used a timeout here in the third quarter. David Wilson, Ed Doherty here at Case Field. Final installment of this series between Case and Worcester for the Baird Brothers Trophy. Back to throw, it's Barnes. Across the middle for Weedrick makes the catch. Hauled down short of the first down by Kerry Dieter. Weedrick had a touchdown pass with 20 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Right now, 29 seconds left here in the third quarter. Barnes approaches the line. 
crucial third down, and they do have to snap the ball as the play clock is two seconds ahead of the game clock. He has changed the play up, and Barnes wants to keep it, and on the keeper, he is hit and tackled by Wade Self. That snuffs out that play, and it'll be the final play of the third quarter, and Worcester looking at a fourth and five. 31 to 21 case after three. The all important fourth quarter is coming up next. We'll have it after this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Cleveland Marriott Downtown at Key Center offers the versatility and reliability to meet your unique travel and meeting needs. From smart spaces to practical amenities to world-class service, our flagship hotel will deliver the quality experience you expect, backed by the Marriott name you trust. At Cleveland Marriott, we have one goal, to serve you better. Book your special Case Western Reserve rate by visiting us at clevelandmarriottdowntown.com and entering promotional code C0N. Well, Case, with that lead of 31 to 21 as we head down the home stretch here as we get to the fourth quarter. And now it's important for Case, it's just a matter of first downs. Each first down is two minutes off the clock. So find a way to just continue to move the chains. Even if you have to punt, each possession you want to pick up two or three first downs. Here is the kick by O'Berry. Nice spiraling punt, and this one will go out of bounds inside the five. O'Berry gets the job done. This one will be at the three. What a kick. Well, Case has had two special teams. Kicks used against him here in the half. The punt here by O'Berry puts him down inside the five, and the kickoff following the score. Left case inside the five when Calabrese slipped and touched down at the four-yard line. Well, 35-yard punt with no return for Dana O'Berry. O'Berry, the senior out of Brush High School. We will be calling his name for the last time. Hanslick out of his own end zone. Does not make it to the five before... He is engulfed by the Worcester defensive line. Spartans today playing without Manny Secre, who has a knee injury, his right knee, the MCL ligament. Injured last week against Wittenberg. And his return to the lineup is uncertain. Olsen rolling out, finds lap Sevic, open space ahead, gets across the 20, out across the 30, and out of bounds into the safety of the case bench. Out toward the 32 yard line. So lap Sevic with the catch and run, and case gets out of the shadow of their own goalpost. That's probably most key, so you don't have to punt from the end zone. Three receivers set, all stacked up to the left side. Hanslick is the lone setback. Olsen under center. Duraney is in at tight end. They give it to Hanslick, and he has nowhere to go with it as he runs right into the teeth of the defense, and the defensive tackle, Taylor Bowen, wraps him up and wrestles Hanslick to the ground. That goes for a one-yard loss, second down and 11 from the 32-yard line. Bright and sunny here today at Case Field. I know everybody likes to play under the lights. and In big time college football, you have the prime time games, with all the uh, big advertising dollars. But I love these 1 o'clock college football games. The true, the true atmosphere of college football. There's no doubt about that. They hand it up the middle. And well, speaking uh, of it was hands look again. Close to the 35. Last week, Case had nearly 2,800 people here for homecoming. Largest crowd in Case Field history. Facility opened in 2005. And uh, even the playoff games 
in 2007, 8, and 9 did not draw the crowd that Case had last week here for homecoming, which really enhances the college atmosphere setting as well, Dave. Lapsevic out of the game right now. He has a cramp getting stretched out over on the sideline. They flip it out to Brian Rice. Makes a nice move across the 40, 45, 50, and into Worcester territory right along the numbers on the right side of the field. Rice makes the grab, and it's a first down for the Spartans. And Rice has a cramp of some sort as well, or he got a Charlie horse, maybe caught a knee up into his thigh. Yeah, he had some guys land on him, that's for sure. Dolan did, a, or Dolan did a nice job getting out in front of that play, had a nice key block that sprung Rice downfield, so give Dolan credit. First and 10 from the 47-yard line. Rice doubled over, trying to catch his breath on the sideline. Handing the football to Hanslick across the 45, down near the 42-yard line, Just finally <laughs> tackled by Seth Goodwin. You see Hanslick cut that ball back in. Once he got to the numbers, Davey, looked for a cut back to the inside. He didn't want to come anywhere near the sideline and potentially stop the clock as Case is using the full play clock and just continuing to pound away at this Worcester defense, making the Scots play not only against the Spartans, but against the timekeeper as well. Case in a favorable position here with a 10-point lead, 31-21, and 11-18 to go in the fourth quarter, and they have the possession of the football. Ezra Kim, spelling Hanslick on this play, dives ahead and is close to first down yardage. It'll be third and less than a yard. It's out to the 37-yard line. Well, it'll be third and a couple of strings of the football. They'll say officially it's on the 38. They need to get to the 37 for the first down. Hockman lines up at fullback. Olsen under center. No wide receivers. They'll hand the ball to Ricky Hanslick and dives ahead, has plenty for the first down. Looked like he hit the back of his offensive lineman, Seamus McDonald, and then bounced off McDonald and had the required yardage for the first down. As they reset the chains and restart the clock, 10 and a half minutes to go. Case with 20 left on the play clock right now. And remember, Dave, this drive started for Case inside their own five following the deep punt. New fullback is in, Manny Sarunas. Uh, and he's running out in front of Hanslick, but Olsen keeps the ball, fires it to Lapsevic, and it is a low throw, and Lapsevic is unable to haul it in. Worcester. Boy, that's been, that's been Ols Olsen's problem all day today, Dave. Everything has been low, almost like he's firing darts. He's throwing from the elbow rather than the shoulder, and he had Lapsevic wide yeah, open. there was uh, no Worcester player within uh, five or six yards of lap seven. And they had all just bitten up on the run. The play fake was very good. Hanslick sold it very well. Olsen rolled out and just couldn't make the connection. Second down and 10 from the Worcester 36 yard line. Olsen asked for and gets a timeout. Timeout came from the bench actually before the play clock got to zero. Greg Debelak uh, meets the huddle, and Case uses their first time out of the half. They have two remaining, although probably would rather not have to use them. 31 to 21, 10.09 to play, bye week next week for the Spartans. So no game, no broadcast next Saturday. And following that, two consecutive road games. Next be in action at Oberlin on the 20th of October. That'll be a one o'clock game at Savage Stadium. Very appropriately named out in Oberlin. And then at Chicago on the 27th, that will be a one o'clock Central Time game. In case we'll finish out the regular season with two games at home. Wash U on November 3rd. And Carnegie Mellon on November the 10th. 10.09 to play here in the fourth quarter. Olsen 
with 17 left on the play clock. He takes the snap. They still had 12 left on the play clock. Hanslick on the run, gets to the 30, down close to the 24, holds on to the football, despite hitting the ground very hard. Holding against Case. And Case will have this one come back. Well, the marker comes down. And they'll walk this one back. It was a nice run by Hanslick, but perhaps sprung for some ec extra yardage by the hold. Well, that call came from the referee, not the umpire. Umpire is usually responsible for the hold. And they are still taking a look at Lap Sevic. He was out earlier on this possession, came back in, had that uh, incomplete pass thrown his way, and now he is back on the bench. And, and gonna, they are getting some ice ready for Sean Lapsevic. They're going to ice him up. I think it's an ankle that they're looking at. Second down and 20 for Case now after the holding penalty. Olsen back to throw it. He is hit as he throws. It's picked off. Intercepted by Quinn Hood of Worcester. Gets back to the 45 to midfield. Still getting some blocking out in front across the 45 of Case. Down to the 42-yard line. Late flag comes out after the play was over. I believe they're going to get Rob Holtz, the defensive end, for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. As he laid out a Case lineman, and then as he got up, either strutted over the top of him or actually made contact with his foot. We'll pick up the call here. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't hear the call, but it is marked off against Worcester. Quinn Hood with the interception, his first of the season. A fifth overall for the Worcester defense on the year. Boy, did things go bad in a hurry for Case there. From the incomplete pass to a wide open left Sevic to the holding call, getting the run called back, to Olsen getting hit as he thrown, and then the interception, the first turnover for Case. Barnes pump fakes. Now he goes middle of the field, threads the needle, and the pass is caught by McIntyre for a first down all the way to the 41-yard line. Barnes put that right in between the numbers of McIntyre with three case defenders nearby. Plenty of time left for Worcester. 9.14 to go in the fourth quarter. 31 to 21. Barnes fakes the handoff to Battaglia, goes deep downfield, McIntyre is wide open, he will waltz in for a Worcester touchdown. 41 yards on the scoring strike to McIntyre, his second touchdown catch of the day. Boy, and from really sky high for Case to really rock bottom. That incomplete pass and everything just sliding downhill for Case since. Now they have lost Lapsevic, at least for the time being. He is on the bench, seated, getting iced down. Meanwhile, here is Gerwig for the PAT, and players moving all over the place on the line, so this one will be re-kicked. Goes against Worcester, so they'll walk off five yards. It'll be a little longer extra point. A little longer with a win that's picking up. This is a key extra point for the Worcester Scots. We'll try to get back within three. 9.01 to go in the fourth quarter. The interception turns into points for Worcester. So Gerwig now with a 25-yard extra point. There's the snap the hold and the kick, and it is good. 31 to 28, three point lead for Case. Fourth quarter action continues after this timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network.
Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its ninth consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or a highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience that is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Thirty-one to twenty-eight, Case finds themselves leading only by three. What was once a thirty-one fourteen ball game. Case led thirty-one to fourteen. With 11.33 to go in this in the uh, third quarter. Case also led 24 to 7 before uh, Worcester scored late in the first half. Here is the kick by Gerwig, a deep driving kick. Calabrese will take it, drop it at the 5, picks it up near the 10, across the 15, and now out across the 20 to the 21-yard line. That's where Case will take over with a three-point lead, 8.55 to go. Looks like the ice being applied, Ed, to Sean Lapsevic's left hamstring. And he is without his helmet. And he is not uh, going to be back in this game anytime soon. And may be thankful that the bye week is coming up as Case medical staff has a lot of work to do over the next two weeks. Lost Colin Dessens earlier. Olsen sprints out, now wants to run it, and is hit and knocked down, knocked out of bounds. Clock will stop with 8.47 to play. Not what Case wanted there. Olsen has to tuck it and dive in. He's not going to get an extra yard, or the extra yard is not going to be as important as the running clock will be. Well, he picks up two. It's second down and eight now for the Spartans here at Case Field. They lead it 21 to uh, 31 to 28 over the Fighting Scots of the College of Worcester. Olson in the shotgun formation has hands licked to his left. They will hand it to Ricky. Gets a decent block, but that closes quickly, and he gets out only to the line of scrimmage, and it's third down and eight. Quinn Hood there again for Worcester. Officially for the Worcester Fighting Scots, their last scoring drive was two plays, 56 yards. It took 29 seconds to cut the lead to three. McIntyre caught the 41-yard touchdown pass. Olsen gets the snap, fires slant route. Intended for Herb, it's incomplete. And Case looking at a fourth and eight. And they will have to punt it away. And the Scots will have a chance to perhaps march down and take the lead with just under eight minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. It was Ogletree Crawford. And that play has the entire Worcester contingency all fired up. So Case a three and out. Alex Ojeda will try and get a good punt away. High snap, but he brings it down and shanks the punt. That one will drop and go out of bounds on the Worcester side of the field. Boy, I have. Pardon me, on the uh, Case side of the field. They'll start this drive in Case territory at the 47-yard line. Not one positive since Lapsevic was unable to come up with the sliding catch. That is a 23-yard punt with no return. First and 10, Worcester from the 47-yard line. 7.43 to go. Barnes playing with more and more confidence as this game goes along. Battaglia hit by Wade Self. He gets to the 44-yard line, a pickup of three. Well, Self stood his ground, did a nice job getting rid of his defender and was able to make that tackle. Case on defense right now, second down and seven. 
A three-point lead for Case. It is 31 to 28. Barnes hollering out a new play. Takes the snap, hands it to Battaglia, reverses direction left side, is hit and knocked down by Calabrese. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, no gain, and it's third and seven for the Fighting Scots. The key on this play is have to watch McIntyre in the slot. Now McIntyre will line up on the right side, two other receivers. Justin Rice is the lone man on the left. They have Battaglia in the backfield. Barnes drops back to throw on third and seven. Watson coming after him. Now Barnes has to run, gets to the 40, is hit and knocked short. down. He is short of the first down. Oh, that was by design as Worcester took all four of their receivers and sent them deep downfield to push the case zone deeper off the line of scrimmage. Barnes initially, as soon as he planted that back foot, went forward on the quarterback draw. So it was a quarterback draw by design. Well, it's fourth and two. Nassim made the tackle, and Worcester will take a timeout and talk this one over. Both teams with two timeouts left. And we have 5.55 to go here in the fourth quarter. It has the feel, Ed, as if we're down to the final minute of the football game, but there is significant time left on the clock. But the game and the outcome of the game may hinge on this upcoming fourth down play. And yeah, the momentum since the 10 minute mark has been completely tipped towards the Worcester Fighting Scots. And everything that could go wrong for Case has everything you can find positive for Worcester. They've been able to do from the interception to the long touchdown pass to the three and out that they force Case on following the scoring drive. And now on fourth and two, well, they're nowhere even in the same universe for field goal range. This would be a 55-yarder to try and tie the game. So they will come out with Barnes at fourth and two and go for it. Rice and McIntyre on the left, three receivers on the right, so an empty backfield on fourth and two. They'll snap it to Barnes. He throws for McIntyre, incomplete. Calabrese on the defensive coverage. Incomplete pass. Case takes over on downs with 5.52 to go in the fourth quarter. Well, Worcester had that set up well. McIntyre didn't run a good route, Dave. He kind of flattened it out as opposed to a crisp corner. And with that, Case was able to rebound Calabrese didn't get picked off on the inside, and the defense held. Eric Olson brings the offense back out. Hanslick is in the backfield. Two tight ends set. Two receivers on the left side. They will hand it to Ricky Hanslick. Cuts back, middle of the field, and all the way down to the 50-yard line. It's a pickup of 11. And a first down. The sophomore gives Case a first down. They reset the chains and restart the clock. Case leading at 31 to 28. Worcester had the ball with a chance to potentially march down the field and jump in front. The defense held, taking over on downs. Olsen. To Hanslick, not much running room, dives ahead, maybe gets one. Second down and nine coming up for the Spartans. See to me here is Case just setting them up. Setting them up for a play action pass down the field or a tight end delay. Beecher is checked back in at quarterback. Beecher has run the ball exclusively today. 
Martin. So in at wide receiver is Tony Leibarger. Beecher will run it behind Hanslick, turns the corner left side, is short of the first down, but gets across the 45. And down to the 43-yard line. A pickup of five, third down and three for the Spartans. Olsen comes back in. Beecher will go to the bench. Fulbers comes out. And into the lineup is Manny Sarunas. And I'm wondering if something happened to Adam Hockman. Barnes playing right now without Sean Lapsevic. Hockman's on the sideline. Timeout will be taken here by Case. They could not get the right formation or the right personnel. Well, as much as that was a key fourth down for Worcester just a couple of minutes ago, this is a key third down conversion for Case. If Case is to convert this third down, then Worcester will have about 3.15 left on the clock when the first down snap is taken and only two timeouts remaining. They are under four minutes to go now. 3.56 left here in the football game with Case Field today. It'll most likely take this first down and one more for Case to put it in their pocket. Case earlier in the game lost Colin Dessens to an injury uh, yet uh, to be confirmed but he was carted off the field and we certainly hope for the best for Colin Dessens it was deemed a precautionary measure but he was immobilized and taken off the field third down and three from the Worcester 43-yard line. The Spartans with Olsen in the shotgun formation. Rice and Leibarger are the receivers on the right side. Hanslick in the backfield. Olsen rolls to throw to his right, looks downfield, guns it for Leibarger, and it is knocked down incomplete. Wow, how is that not interference? Wow. Ogletree Crawford just Really played the receiver only. Didn't really look back for the ball and let his other defender come back and get the ball. Mitchell Zerniak knocked it down and another case player is injured now. It is fourth down and three. And that I believe may be Olsen. Cannot see the case player, but I'm trying to see the number that is Olsen. It is Eric Olsen who is down, and they are taking a look at his left leg. Spartans have lost Sean Lapsevic, their talented sophomore receiver, and now Olsen appears to be in pain on the side on the uh, field near the uh, right hash mark. He got rid of that football as he was hit. Case will be punting this one away. The offensive unit has already retreated to the bench. The left knee of Olsen. And that would have been his landing leg. He is helped up and he is going to be helped off the field. Olsen just very gingerly putting some weight on that left leg and now just is not putting any weight on it at all it is uncanny what is happening to this football team three forty nine to go Alex Ojeda out to punt Worcester will get the ball back. Here is the kick. A good punt and a fair catch called for and taken by Brandon James at the 10-yard line. 33-yard kick with no return. And the Scots come out trailing by three, 31 to 28. 
They've got Olsen flat on the trainer's table looking at his left knee. Three forty three to go. Fourth quarter action at Case Field. Week six matchup against the College of Worcester. Back to throw Barnes to Battaglia. Drops the ball incomplete. Screen pass does not work out. Second down and ten. It really seems to be the effective play for Worcester right now is they're running all of their receivers as far off the ball as possible, creating separation between the linemen and the underneath linebacker zones, and then either having Barnes run the ball or trying to find the outlet pass to the running back in that same empty void. Second down and 10, Barnes takes the snap, drops back, now he wants to run it. He's in trouble and he is right up against the goal line and stays out of the end zone somehow, but he is tackled back near the two. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack. Well, Barnes dropped back, then he thought about running, then he thought about trying to throw it, and it all expired. Well, this is a key situation, too, because if Barnes has to scramble in the end zone, it's maybe more troublesome for the offensive line. If they get called for holding, it will be a safety against Worcester. Barnes is in the end zone now, dropping back to throw it. Pressure coming. He makes a run for it, gets rid of the football. McIntyre had yeah. it go right through his hands out near the first down marker. Boy, and the referee thought about calling a holding. He looked for his flag. Michael Harris got held up by, I believe it was Michael McCants, the right guard from Worcester. And for a moment, the referee hesitated. Now, Oberry lined up outside the end zone initially on the punt. He takes the snap in the end zone and gets the quick kick away. Calabrese says, I'm not going to touch it. It rolls behind him, takes a Worcester bounce out to the 48, make it the 47 yard line. That's a 45 yard kick with no return. Well, Olsen is up walking around. Worcester has two timeouts remaining, Dave, meaning that Case is going to need one first down to not have to give the ball back to the Scots. And we may see Beecher throw his first pass of the ball game. Now right now, Olsen does not appear to be close to coming back in. Beecher calls out the signals, takes the snap, and he will, will try and run it, but he is planted by Ogletree Crawford. Two twenty-four to go, and Worcester has stopped the clock with a timeout, I believe. Yes, Worcester has used the timeout, and whether or not, again, Case picks up positive yardage or not, the essence here is Case just needs to run the ball. Again, it'll take it down to about the 220 mark. Worcester will use their final timeout. Case will then have to kick the ball back to Worcester with roughly 90 seconds to go. And with the wind behind them, most likely put Worcester in a big hole. Should they not complete a first down? That's if they just take a knee and don't really attempt to do much. Now Worcester with only one timeout remaining. Case has one timeout, 2.24 to go. It's 31 to 28, Case leading it by three. Well, Case is already missing their left guard. There are two starting running backs their star receiver and their quarterback from the offensive set today. Beecher takes the snap, picks his way forward, has good running room out across the 40 to the 35 and down to the 33 yard line. First down Spartans. And Beecher is fired up. And that may be the hammer that breaks the shoe that Worcester thought they would be wearing. 14 yards on the scramble by Beecher. 
And it's first and 10, Case with two minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Spartans by three, 31 to 28. Beecher looks over to the sideline. Case using all of the play clock that they can. The play clock down to two, there's the snap. Beecher running near the sideline and he oh. goes out of bounds. Did Worcester a favor there as he goes <laughs> out of bounds to stop the clock. And as he comes back in bounds, Ogletree Crawford kind of tapped him on the helmet probably to say thank you. Well, he scrambles for nine yards. That's the good news. Down to the 25. Case operating in Worcester territory. 138 to go. 31-28 Spartans. Hanslick lines up behind Beecher. Beecher, the sneak, straight ahead, has the first down. He gets to the 23-yard line, a pickup of two. They'll move the chains and restart the clock. Well, they have attached a huge ice bag to Eric Olson's left knee, and it's the outside of the left knee. And he is limping badly. That has the makings of a knee ligament damage written all over it. 120. Spartans now in victory formation. Beecher takes a knee. 112 to go. And Scott's a timeout a taken by Worcester. That's their final timeout. Olsen is done for the day. Lapsevic done for the day. Secre was not medically cleared to play today. Ricky Hanslick was fighting through an ankle injury all day. Matt White did not play today. Michael Firamonte on the defensive side was out with a stinger. Dessens was taken to a local hospital. Brandon Bryant missed some time because of a knee injury. Bryant was able to return as Beecher takes the knee. That brings us to the one minute mark here in the quarter. We're in the fourth quarter. Play clock winding down now. It is at 20, 48 seconds left on the game clock. Third down and 13 for Case. Spartans are gonna take their final time out, I believe when this gets down to. Beecher will take a knee. Now they won't have to. They will not have to run another play. Case will win this one and keep the Baird Brothers trophy on the Case campus six in a row against Worcester to close out the series as Case will prevail here today 31 to 28. A game that was costly in terms of health to the Spartans roster. But they get the job done today on a golden fall afternoon here at Case Western Reserve University. Final score 31 to 28. Our post game show will follow immediately. Ed and I will have a look at the final stats for you as we talk about this case win. They are back at the 500 mark at 3-3. Three and three. We'll have more coming up in just a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. I have this cool cash. What can I do with it? You can turn it into a hot meal at Rascal House. It's the best value in town. What do they have there? Buckets of wings, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and of course, great pizza. Are they open late? You bet. Open every night till 2.30 a.m. And you can even build your own pizza and order it online at rascalhousepizza.com. Cool. See you at the Spartans game? Yep. And see you after at Rascal House. 
At Qdoba, made from scratch gets a lot of respect. Years ago, that expression didn't even exist. There was no not made from scratch, just fresh ingredients making delicious dishes. Well, when it comes to our cooking, we're a little old fashioned. That's why we come in early every day to hand smash our guacamole, hand chop our pico de gallo, and why we grill our steak and chicken over an open flame. Because doing it the right way is the only surefire way to make it tasty. Qdoba Mexican Grill, food for people who love food. Well, the trophy, the Baird Brothers Trophy, named after Bill and Bob Baird, two economics professors, one taught at Case, one taught at uh, Worcester, started this trophy a quarter century ago, and it will stay in the hallowed halls of Case Western Reserve University for the foreseeable future as these teams are not scheduled to play anymore. Both teams have their schedules set through the 2017 season. And uh, it'll be a number of years before these two teams play again. And the Baird Brothers Trophy is handed back to Case, where it will stay. They will add another fish to the line following this year's game. And that's the way it will stay for a while. 31-28, to Case wins it today. Here at Case Field, David Wilson back with Ed Doherty. A nail-biter at the end. Worcester had some opportunities, but Case had just enough today to slip by the Fighting Scots, who battled back to make this one interesting. And Ed, the Spartans back to 3-3 three and three now as they snap the three-game skid. And if there's a team that needed a bye week coming up more than anybody else, it would have to be the the Case Spartans, considering the number of injuries they had coming into today's game and then the number they sustained during the 60 minutes this afternoon, uh, the injury list might actually be longer than the active list uh, if they were forced to play last week. But 715 yards in total offense between the two teams, and the uh, Spartans come away with the 31-28 victory. I mean, overall for the Spartans, they had 166 yards on the ground, 247 yards through the air, 68 offensive plays for 413 yards. For Worcester, 90 yards rushing, 213 yards passing, 68 offensive plays for 303 yards in total offense. Now, in the first half, Case was just two of six on third down conversions, and they ended up finishing the afternoon five of 13. Uh, including the kneel down at the end of the ball game. Worcester was 6 of 11 in the first half, but just 2 of 7 in the second half for a total of 8 of 18. Case did come back to command the time of possession. They win it 30 minutes and 16 seconds to 29-44. And uh, probably the most important stat uh, on the, uh, the day for Case is the 31-28 win. Hanslick led the way 77 yards on the ground. Billy Beecher had 73 on the ground. Eric Olson, nine yards rushing, and Ezra Kim got his first career uh, varsity touchdown here at the collegiate level, seven yards rushing on two carries. Olson was uh, average, I would say, this afternoon, 12 of 26, 224 yards. He did have the three touchdowns, but he threw one interception Midway through the fourth quarter, Lepsevic led the way. Five catches, 93 yards and a touchdown. Brian Rice had 95 yards receiving on four receptions and a touchdown. Brian Herb had a catch and a touchdown as well for Case. And defensively, Adam Watson led the way. 13 tackles, so did Ryan Ferguson. And Kevin Nossum also recorded 13 tackles for the Case Spartans. Well, Ed, as uh, you mentioned, they got off to a very good start in this game today, taking that 17 to nothing lead, and it uh, had uh, the feel of the Spartans of old with that uh, quick strike capability early in the football game. But you have to hand it to the Fighting Scots, and uh, definitely nothing that we have not seen from them before. A terrific program under Mike Schmitz, and boy, I will really miss this matchup every year. It's, it's very entertaining. It always has been. I mean, it, uh, two quality schools, and, and again, they're not in the same conference, so with cases moved to their new conference and the uh, desire to maintain some of their old uh, rivalries with both Washington U and uh, 
Chicago, it limits Case's ability to schedule non-conference games. And unfortunately, the, the, the long-standing rivalry with Worcester will go by the wayside. It's, it's always been an interesting ball game, uh, high scoring at times, but never boring, including last year's game that went to overtime. Well, no game next week. It is a bye week for Case. We'll next be with you on our broadcast coverage on the road at Oberlin College. That will be on the 20th of October, two weeks from today. That will be a 1 o'clock kickoff. We'll have pregame coverage beginning at 1245 from Savage Stadium as the Spartans will take on the Yeoman. That will wrap up our coverage for today. Special thanks to Mike Becker, our producer and engineer up top. For Ed Doherty, this is David Wilson saying goodbye from Case Field. Again, the final score, it was the Spartans 31 and the Worcester Fighting Scots 28. You've been watching Case Football on the Spartans Broadcasting Network.